Wow, uh, marking years since the pandemic began and the world's never been the same. But here to offer her insight is author and physician, Dr. Jean chamberlain Fro. She's also a professor, McMaster University and founding director of Save the Mothers, an amazing organization. Uh, she's here with her new book, Our Long Midnight, Reflections of a Physician on Life and Faith During a Global Pandemic. Well, welcome to 700 Club Canada. So great to have you with us. Great to be here, thank you. Yeah, you know what, it feels like, wow, the pandemic, is it still happening? It just, it began years ago, we're still feeling the implications of it. Um, it's upended our lives, leaving many of us feeling disoriented, but you shared your own journey and reflections in regular blog posts that you compiled into this book, Our Long Midnight. What were some things you saw as a doctor that motivated you to write the book? Well, I think, Laurie, for me, um, obviously, as an obstetrician delivering new life in the middle of a pandemic, it seems like a bit of an uh, unusual situation where you're bringing new life when we're trying to save life on the other end. But I just really uh, saw so many things going on, and I thought, you know, we really need to document. We really need to share what's been going on. Um, and as a physician and also a, a, a um, daughter of uh, elderly parents. My parents are quite old and living in a senior's home, uh, dealing with their situation and their health. I also have school-aged children uh, as they were wor working in school and on Zoom and that sort of thing. I, I maybe had a little bit of an interesting perspective. And I thought, you know, it's important to share this with other people, both for our current generation as well as people that come. And as somebody who is a, a person of faith, who loves Christ and wants to live out my daily life, I thought, you know, maybe there's something here that I can share that would be helpful to others. I actually started the blog right when the pandemic uh, started. It was just a spontaneous thing. And then I thought, you know, I'm actually going to put this together uh, in a book to share with people. I think that's so good because you're right. I mean, don't we learn from history? <laughs> but we need to be really telling our story while history is in the making. What do you think mm -hmm. is one of our greatest lessons then from the pandemic as a society? Well, I think the biggest lesson for all of us, uh, including myself as a physician, is we're not in control. And I think probably that was the biggest challenge that people had was all of a sudden, all of the safety measures that we had in life, we can give antibiotics, stop infections, we can give medications to reduce inflammation, we can give medications to stop pain. All of a sudden, all the things that we could, we had thought we were in control about, uh, we no longer are. And whenever we lose control, we also start to fear. And I often find that with my patients as well, too, especially mothers giving birth. One of the hardest parts about giving birth is just the fear. Um, and so as people become afraid, uh, it becomes even more and more difficult. So I think that was one of them. Uh, and my first blog actually was on plans, plans, and the whole idea being is that all of our plans are out the window, all the things that we thought we had control of, all the meetings that were cancelled, all of the things that we had planned, all of a sudden in a stroke uh, were just gone. And I think that lack of control was uh, something that we really realized. But I hope also people took the um, time and continue to, to realize that, well, we're not in control, but God is. And I think for me as a believer and one who loves Christ in the middle of situations where there was a really lack of control and lack of being able to help somebody. I mean, we, I had several patients that were in the intensive care unit, pregnant women that were as close to death as you would ever want to be. And, and yet as a physician, how would even in those moments doing all the medical things that we possibly can to save this uh, patient's life, that we can also spend that time also thinking and praying for that patient as well too, and really asking God uh, to help us uh, to be wise and to do what we can do and also comfort people uh, that are around us as well too. I think that was a really important part um, uh, of the whole experience. You know, I think you've hit it right on the head. I, I, I can't relate to what it must feel like as a doctor, you're on the front lines uh, there was so much pressure in the medical on the medical field, you know, for people to be the answer to all things. Did you feel that pressure even more intensely than you probably already do in that time? Well, I'm sure we we did as a health, a health professionals, uh, but at the same time, we also realize our vulnerability. I mean, we also could get COVID. Uh, you go in, and you look after a patient, and all of a sudden, you become infected. But interesting, Lori, my own mother got COVID and quite uh, badly as well, too, and almost died. And I remember the morning the, them calling me to the hospital. I was a lucky enough to be able to go in. It was a, sh a short period of time when visitors were allowed. And I just thought, wow, my mother is going to die today of this disease. And uh, here I am trying to fight for other women. And here's my own mother almost going to die. And by God's grace, she didn't die. 
But I think it was a real experience for me and my family uh, to go through that and realize how challenging it is not to be able to visit the way you wanted to. Only two of us could go in and see her. And, you know, what? I have four siblings. I mean, which one of us can go in to see mom for the last time? So I think that personal experience also really helped to put the face on how other patients and their families were feeling as well. And it's really changed the way I see uh, disease today, whether it's anything to do with COVID or not. We are still continuing to see COVID. I just saw a patient last week with COVID who was pregnant. Again, obviously not as ill, but it's uh, still certainly there. But I think, again, um, that being grounded in our faith that, you know what, we can do. We can believe in God, even in in tragedy, even in challenging times. Um, he is there with us, and I think for me, that was really the greatest lesson of uh, the pandemic. Well, thanks for sharing that. You know, I mean, to experience all that on a personal level while you're working in it, um, it's really impacting. And what would you say to people still struggling emotionally or even socially due to the pandemic? Yeah, and there certainly are many, many people, aren't there? I think the first thing I would say is just let's remind ourselves what this pandemic showed us, and that is the importance of community. I mean, it was amazing the heroic things that people did during the early days of the pandemic. They just stepped up and did it. And I think just we need to go back to what does it mean to be community. And for some people, they can't necessarily get out of their homes for whatever reason. Maybe they still are isolated. But to be part of some sort of group, whether it's um, on online, which isn't as good as being in person, but certainly it's a start, you know, being part of a small group through your church, being part of an exercise group, doing something with your community, whether it's with people of faith or not. I mean, all of us need that group together. We can be encouragement to others. So I think community is so important because people have become so incredibly isolated that it is fueling their ability to come out of some of the mental health challenges that they have. I think another very obvious thing is exercise. I mean, I exercise many times a week, and I think that really helps people as well. I mean, we're body, soul, and spirit. We're not just the, the spirit. So our bodies need to exercise. And, you know, as we're exercising, spend that time just reminding yourself of the grace and peace of Christ. You know, I just was reading recently in Galatians 1 about how Paul said, you know, may the peace and the grace of God be with you. And I think that's what people really need is that grace and peace uh, in their lives. And those are some simple things to do is be part of a community somewhere, exercise and just keep yourself rooted and grounded in that grace and peace of Christ that he has for each one of us, regardless of whether we, whatever it is that we do in life. Some people look at me as a doctor sort of think, oh, you know, it's easy for you, but no, each one of us have our personal challenges. And uh, those are the things that really rooted me in this time. That's so good. Thank you so much uh, for sharing that. Thanks for your book. Uh, thanks for all that you're doing and that encouragement. Well, for more on Dr. Chamberlain Froze's book, uh, go to 700club.ca. Thank you so much. God bless you and your continued work. You're awesome. Thank you.